standing on your feet, can you just hold your Bibles or any means that you use to read the Word of God so that we make this confession. Remember confession, you say the same thing that God says concerning your life. Just hold your Bible in your hand and let's make this confession. Just say this Bible, it's God speaking to me. I believe, I receive the Word of God as the truth nothing but the truth for my life right now in jesus name you may be seated in the presence of the lord come on bless somebody sitting next to you tell them neighbor i love you and i love you and i love you come on tell them with the love of jesus tell somebody be blessed tell them something good it's about to happen to you in jesus name amen are you blessed to be in the house of god Welcome to the house of God. It is the day that the Lord has made for all of us to rejoice and to be glad in his presence. How about the book of Hebrews chapter number 11 verse number 6? It says God rewards the people that seek after him. And guess what? You are one of those people. The Bible says the grass one day will wither and the flowers will fade away. But the word of our God shall stand forever in Jesus name. As we know uh, the month of the month of November, we are about to go to the the end of this month uh, uh, the, the weekend event we'll speak about it after the the sermon so that all of you can be ready outside uh, the house the year the year 2022 is the year of mission impossible so that means the task that god gives you throughout the course of this year expect impossible task that's why jesus said with men this is impossible but with god all things are possible so just believe him whenever you see an impossible task don't shy away no call it a faith project because god is about to do something big with you and concerning you in this earth the month of the morning the month of november is our month of undeserved favor the favor the unmerited favor of god it's something that god gives you that you don't deserve that is what you call favor another word for favor it's grace the moment you read the bible you see the word grace it means means about unmerited favor. Lorena, you were saved by grace. You don't deserve this. We were supposed to die, but favor somehow made a point. Our foundational scripture is found in Ephesians 4, verse 7. It says, yet the grace or the God's undeserved favor was given to each and every one of us in proportion to the measure of Jesus' rich and abundant gift to us. So Mudim offered the gifts. He doesn't give you the gifts telling associated with poverty, but he gives you something healing associated with abundance. That's why the Bible says he came so that we may have life and have life more abundantly in Jesus name open with me in your word let me speak to you on the subject the title the beware of familiarity beware of familiarity people likes to be familiar to certain situation beware of familiarity familiarity is just a simple word here english which means to be at ease or effortless you are familiar to me. So that is what familiar is about. It's become easy. You, you relax when you are in the presence of those people. There's no effort or there's no uh, extra effort that you put in that person. That's what we call familiarity. You know, in English, there's a statement which says, familiarity breeds contempt. That's it, that statement. Ne? Familiarity breeds contempt. To, uh, to breed, to give birth to something else. Familiarity is what we mean to be at ease or effortless. Now, what does the word contempt mean? Contempt means a feeling that something or someone is worthless. You are worthless. That's what we call contempt. It's when you feel or something or someone, they are worthless. Now, when we say familiarity breeds contempt, what we are saying, anyone you are familiar to, you'll see them as worthless. You understand that one? Eh? Anybody that you are familiar to, you see them as worthless. And do you know that familiarity is one of the root causes of extramarital affairs? Bunyadi, Skelembi, Bufafaleli, 
Familiarity is the root cause. Yeah, extramarital affairs. You know why? When I get used to my partner, I don't value them anymore. That's why I go out and find somebody else outside the circle of my marriage. So be careful that you don't get used to somebody that you stay with in your house. I'm speaking to married people in Zimbabwe Jolang. Now you must understand, Dore, familiarity is one of the root cause to extra marital affairs. Because why? I don't worth those people anymore. Luckily, in their presence, they, Dore, it's effortless. You don't value them again in your life. And familiarity also is the root cause here, yeah, church hoping. Church hoping, I'm speaking about people who are here this week next month the third month the last quarter of the year that is the root cause you get used to what you are doing in church even me i've been preaching for more than i don't know how many years i've preached more than 1000 sermons every day when i'm giving the opportunity to preach and come and stand here i know something is wrong there must be a conscience in me whenever I stand. Just for the few five seconds, ten seconds. You know why? I thank God for that conscience every day. Because I'm not familiar to this office. The moment you become familiar, you won't see any worth in what you are doing. That's why you don't stay in one church. Some of you are complaining, why 11 o'clock we close the gates? You know why you are complaining? You are familiar to this church. You know, Langa fit like a twelve. Okay, you don't move to the mamukai. I can come to church. Come to one. I know who wants to allah, wants to allah. Ria high rosefa di job because why you are familiar to the system. That's why most of you are complaining, Muruti. Why are you closing the gates of church? But where you work, they close the gates. I mean, men polenanta testify. I went to Easterberg many times. You don't just get in; they close the gates. Mara, come to church. We complain because why? We are familiar. Today. Somebody who's not familiar, you'll be here by half past nine, knowing the church starts at ten. Because you are not familiar to the environment. Familiarity also is the root cause of you being fired at work. The reason why they fired you, you are too familiar. You don't even see your boss as your boss anymore. You can do anything that you want anytime. Khalemela, you can even retaliate. You know why? Familiarity. And I can tell you, Lena, as your pastor, once you become familiar to me, Langarera for 50 hours, you will never hear anything I'm saying. Because why? You are familiar to me. Once you bring me to the level where I'm at your level, trust me, even if I preach for 50 hours, nothing that will benefit you. And in fact, people who are familiar, they don't grow. Amen. Don't get familiar standing here and singing a song. You'll be singing the same song every Sunday because you are familiar. Don't get familiar by standing here leading the program or intercession. You'll get what? You won't grow because you won't even prepare because you are familiar. Lena is your pastor. I'm not familiar to you. You know what? Because I prepare myself. Whether who came is five or ten, I don't care and it doesn't matter. I do what God has sent me to do. You know why? I'm not familiar to you. Lulu Nagal encourager, do not be familiar to me. Once you are familiar, you stop growing. And if you don't grow, it means you are about to die. So familiarity will cause people not to grow. Let's take the first example, First Samuel chapter number 16. I'm reading from verse number 1. First Samuel chapter number 16, reading from verse number 1. Familiarity, be careful of that spirit because it will breed contempt in your life. And once only contempt, it means everything that is around you, you see it a little worthless because you are not growing anymore. First Samuel chapter number 16, I'm reading verse number 1. First Samuel. Chapter number 16, we are reading from verse number 1. If you've got it, let me hear you say, Amen. Amen. And the Bible says in verse number 1, The Lord God said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing that I've rejected him from reigning over Israel? Salevala, Saul is the king of what? Israel. Salevala. Then from there, I told you, fill up your horn with oil, I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king amongst his sons. 
Don't forget, Saul is not yet dead. He's still alive. But God has rejected him because Saul became disobedient to God. You remember God gave Saul an instruction, go and destroy the Amalekites. Why? I did not forget. When my people were walking through the wilderness for 40 years, the Amalekites, they attacked them for no apparent reason. I marked it somewhere in my calendar. Now it's time not for revenge, but for vengeance. Go out and destroy everybody in the vicinity of the Amalekites. It's true. Saul went there and he killed the men and women and children. Then when he passed the crawl, he saw the fattened calves and the fattened uh, cows that go by Amalekites. Then he took some of them. He did not destroy them. Then when they arrived back home in Jerusalem, they made a party for almost seven days, making sacrifices to God to thank God for the victory that he has given them upon the Amalekites. And God came and asked Saul a question. Saul, what's happening here? No, God, we are celebrating. Why are you celebrating the victory that you gave us? Now we took these uh, uh, kettles and make a sacrifice to you. And God asked Saul, Saul, did I not tell you destroy everything associated with the Amalekites? Yes, say you told me so but I thought let me take this and make a sacrifice to you and God rejected Saul right there that's why this the the, the code is uh, obedience is better than sacrifice you should have obeyed me but you took a step so it's a sacrifice but how so obedient that Giving it becomes worthless before God. God can tell me, I'm over my thing, 5,500. Now we over 5,600 rand. Just that 100 rand, they get something extra. I am disobedient to God because He told me, give Him 5,500. Uh, partly obedience, it equals to total disobedience. You don't just obey God when it suits you. you what God told you, I mean, take for example, uh, Noah. Noah is building an ark and God told him what kind of wood he must use, what kind of everything he must use. Little pick it the nails. He told him what kind you must do. Now let's assume Noah uses a cheap wood. Do you think that ark was going to stay there until the flood is down? No. It was going to sink. When God told tell you something, you do it to the latter. That's what we call obedience. Then from there, God rejected Saul as the king of Israel. Now he wants to appoint a king to come and take over Israel. That's why he sent Saul to go and appoint a king for him in Israel. Verse number two. Then Samuel said, how can I go? If King Saul hears about this, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a high fire. Haifa is an animal we use for a sacrifice. Take a haifa with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. In case King Saul can say, just tell him I'm here to sacrifice for the Lord so that he doesn't suspect anything. Verse number three. And invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do and you shall anoint for me the one I name to you, underline that statement. I will name the one that you are supposed to anoint. You don't anoint based on what you see. I'm going to direct you every step of the way. That's what faith is all about. God doesn't give us a preview, then we get there. He directs us step by step. I mean, remember Genesis 12. God comes to Abraham. Abraham, leave your father's house, take only your wife, and go to the place that I will show you. I don't show you the place. I show you as you walk together with me. I will let you know which one you must anoint. So that means Samuel is not supposed to be led by emotions, but he's supposed to be led by the Spirit of God. That's where many Christians will fail. Because we are emotional beings. Even the decision that we make, they are clouded by emotion. When you come to the person I'm marrying, emotion. The job that I'm taking, emotion. The project I'm doing, emotion. And anything you do it emotionally, it's bound to fail in your life. Verse number four. And Samuel did what the Lord told him. And he came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town, they trembled when they saw Samuel. And they said... Prophet Samuel, have you come here peaceably? Meaning, something wrong in the community. Verse number five. And Samuel said, peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons 
and called them to the sacrifice. Verse number six. When they had come, he looked on Eliab, who is the eldest son, and Samuel said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Remember, God told him, You shall anoint the one that I name to you. Marahab, one of the firstborn here, JC, Samuel assumes, Neman, this is the right person to be anointed. That means Samuel is led by emotions right there. When I just wait for me to tell you, tell life or turn red or make a U-turn, do not assume this is my will for your life. So Samuel is about to make a mistake. Verse number seven, but the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his appearance or the height of his stature, or the size of his bank account, or these things. No, 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 that is not the one I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as human being sees. For men, human being, they look on the outside appearance. That's what we call familiarity. For people to qualify, I look at how they appear on the outside. Get on the familiarity. But the Lord looks on the heart. Meaning, he doesn't judge the book by the cover. He works with the condition of the heart. And guess what? The people that God used, according to their physical appearance and stature, for those who are saved more than Christ himself, they don't qualify those people. I grew up in the police of Jesus. Rahalalel. Those people, they don't qualify. But Paul is a murderer. Anybody that God used, they don't qualify. Because God doesn't judge the book by the cover. But is dependent on what's on the inside. Verse number 7. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him to pass before Samuel. But Samuel said, Nay, man, God has not spoken to me. Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Verse number nine. Then Jesse made Shama to pass by. Remember, he's bringing them by their age. The first born, the second born, the third born. We call that familiarity. God doesn't work at the program. He disturbs the program. That's why I gave it two months ago. There's a system of how the world functions. For example, I'm born today. I know that I must grow to ECD. Uh, I must go to ECD. Then from there, I'm doing grade one. Then I get to uh, primary school, primary school, high school, high school. I graduate. I go to tertiary, tertiary. I get my degree. After my degree, I get a nice job. I get a woman or I get a wife. I get married. I buy a house. I buy a car and then we get old and somebody dies and my children get married now it's a process that goes on like that but when god comes into the picture he doesn't follow the system of this world that's why romans 12 you need to renew your mind do not adjust yourself to the system of the world that's why our 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 vision statement it says we spread the message of hope in order for us to change the world but not to change the message in order to suit the system of this world so we don't compromise in what we believe in then jesse made shama to pass by and samuel said nor has the lord chosen this one verse number 10 jesse made it servants of his son passed before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of this. And remember, Jesse has eight sons. But he brought the seven that he assumed they qualify. He assumed they qualify. Verse number 11. Then he said to Jesse, are all your sons here? Jesse said, Ish man, on alumon the youngest, he's tending the sheep outside there in the field. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him, for he will, we will not sit down until that, that rejected one is here. You see what Jesse did? He functioned on familiarity. He brought those that he thinks they qualify, but God doesn't function in that way. So they went out and fetched. The young one, uh, he got to go moving. Da, 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 then the David comes into the picture. Then Jesse said and brought him. David had a healthy, reddish complexion. 
He had beautiful eyes. He was fine looking. He's got an earring. We let the nose piercing and the tongue piercing. Or we let her two mumu go. They start the mumu la lenya tewa. If ella samu mu agizi mo kaya kumura. God, how many abilities out of order? The gene is in the boy. Mumu na unsi se di anda wey agela bana ge style today. How many this boy? Can say the dreadlocks totally out of order. That's why they never brought him into the queue because this boy is out of order. And guess what? The Lord said to Samuel, Arise and anoint him. This is the one. This is the one. So oh, break out any kind of formality that we think because familiarity will make you to lose what God wants to do in your life. Let's take an example. Numbers chapter number 12 in the Old Testament. Numbers chapter number 12. Numbers chapter number 12. This is the Israelites while they were still in the wilderness to, on their way to the promised land. Numbers chapter number 12. So beware of the spirit of familiarity. In fact, uh, to tip you before we get there, do you know who are most of our traditional healers, they operate on the spirit of familiarity. You know what do they do? When you arrive there, but where are their bones, and then you must butuela uh, inside. As no butuela inside, what you are doing, you are giving them access to you. Kamara, that's sick. Yeah, the bones. You are giving them access to. Then then they pour them on the ground. After they pour them on the ground, then bo level and I give you why about to choose a elaya daisy lili no la kulobe la la noha li watu at baribi ili mola. Kuto na zabadu choose ya daisy as I wanna buy it. Buy bela mola sighting. Ebe bow bow predicted. First thing, but all but all bolela. What is familiar to you? Alison Grape, you know. They will tell you. I, I once went through this. I think 1990, before I, I went away, 1999 to 89, somewhere in there. I went to town. We were staying here in Rorile. I went to town. My mom from somewhere go shop right. When Obama was in line the Department of Education, there was a tree there, a, a big, big tree, a nice one. Then when I passed by that tree, one of this guy, who appeared that clothes, it's a lot of masangom and everything, uh, then we were on the, on the corner. Then from there, one piece of table. I came. I've got news for you. All right, what's the news? Uh, by the way, yesterday, Legila Papa and Chicken Stew, Ka a Batanati, Le Cabici, Le Watuat Coheno, or Vesica, nine o'clock, Mabanevishi. And it's true. It's true. After that, he tells me I'm supposed to die. There are people who want to kill me. And he gave me five cents. You remember that big five cents? I wake up and a millennium. Five cent was too, too big. He gave me a five cent. Then he told me when I get home. He told me son, uh, Monday will not come to pass while I'm still alive. It's Saturday lunchtime when he told me those things. He gave me five cent. He told me when I get home, put the five cent inside the water, pour in water, and bath. After you bath, leave that five cent there. It will disappear on its own. Then I took the five cent. I went to buy whatever I bought. I went home. When I got home, I never told anybody at home. I kept quiet. Sunday we went to church. After church we ate lunch. Six o'clock, seven in the evening, nine. My time of dying now is coming closer. And I didn't fulfill what that guy told me to do. I'm about to die. Yeah, sure, I know. I know how to 11 to 12. Hey, I'm about to die. Yesterday when you sent me to town, I met this guy. He told me I must take this five cent and bath on it. Then I'm going, Mama, take that five cent. I was like, Gary, don't do that. <laughs> I'm going to our no man, nobody. He said something. He said, nobody knows the time or the hour when you are going to die. Yeah. Master, he changed everything in me. Monday morning came, I'm still alive. How are you doing again? They will always tell you something that is familiar to you. The reason why you believe in them is because they told you something. They will tell you something that is familiar to you. Because they know once they told it to you, whatever they're going to say after that, you won't even debate with them. Because familiarity, familiarity. So be careful of that spirit. Hey, men of God, what you are born, familiarity spirit. That's how the devil operates. Numbers chapter number 12. I'm reading verse number 1. Are you there? All right. The Bible says, Now Miriam and Aaron. Miriam and Aaron, get the siblings, it's uh, Moses. 
I got to remember when Moses was born, uh, the mother made him a nice cage. And he put the baby in there. He went through the Nile River. The person who was looking after Moses when he was a baby, it was this lady, Miriam. So Miriam and Aaron get a brother and sister to Moses. They talked against Moses, their brother, because of the Cushite wife. For Moses married a Cushite wife. Your version says an Ethiopian woman. The word Cushite, uh, it comes from uh, identity, yeah, the dark-skinned people within South Sudan and Ethiopia. How we are to Sudan, the most dark-skinned people. Now we are black, but how we are Sudan, we realize we are a white person. You are not black. In that area, temperatures are very high. We are not a geography. We are an equatorial something. Can I tell Equator, yeah, equator. So, area or let's actually camp for a long time in a season, in a year. So, most people in there they are dark skin. So, this wife that Moses married, Pila Pila in our language, he married a black woman. And the brother and the sister they had a problem. Yahore Moses married a black woman. Women. Then another xenophobic is that now. Nancy little mo Bible linga shiba. They want to reject their brother because he he married a black woman from Africa. Ethiopia is in Africa. Verse number two. Then they said, "Has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has He not spoken also by us?" And guess what? The Lord heard their gossip. There will be a time. Most of the lungungutwa. Moto would send the same question. Or Anna, is he the one only that God speaks through? Len Namudimu can speak through me. So that's what they did, speaking about Moses. All along, Moses delivered the message. Now, because they are familiar to him, they start to undermine him. Verse number three. Now, the man Moses was very meek. Meek, it's not the same as weak. Meek, it means somebody who is gentle and humble and kind and understanding. And he was above all men on the face of the earth. I guess like you have say. Moses, he was above all men in the face of the earth. So that means Moses was not just an ordinary man, but he was an extraordinary man. He was anointed. By God. In fact, Moses was a type of God. But when Miriam and Aaron, when they saw Moses, they saw an ordinary man. That's why they became familiar to him. Because why? The way they looked at him, they didn't see a man who's above all men in the face of the earth, but they saw a brother, something that is level to them, not above them, not beneath them. In fact, when you study the book of Genesis uh, 37, uh, when Joseph was born, the brothers rejected Joseph. Joseph was not at their level. He was higher than them. In fact, Joseph was the best thing that ever happened to them. If they knew whom they were rejecting, if they knew whom they sold as a slave, that was limo family in Zalona. There's somebody that God has planted for the primary purpose or Akono deliver that family from the strongholds of the devil. And guess what? Those are the people that we reject the most. Those are the people that reject the most. I mean, at home, I'm a second born. And as a second born, you know, there's no attention. Attention, you got the first born leader. Last born. I remember one day she was TV. Uh, I think Gil Silo Rulo or something on TV. Uh, or a, or a Vela P. Example or whom, whom we were watching. Then when Kalemo TV, no what an LED break. So we need another ten minutes then a break. Now we both hear Monkung. She was TV. Then here comes a break. When a break comes, kya email la kya email la. Mama le papa they spoke simultaneously. Tabo raise the TV. And I'm wondering, guys, we are three kids in this house. And simultaneously, why let's choose you? Why let's choose you? To be honest, somewhere on the way, you feel like I'm adopted. I'm not a member of this family. I don't get any attention. Just like that. 
That is one thing in Kenya. Every school holidays, I go back to Pretoria. I've never spent holidays in Mutavazim. Never. Tomorrow I pack my bag. Go to Pretoria. I'm going to spend the holidays and I come back. Go. That's why immediately I go. Gone forever. You know why? Because no attention that I'm getting. But outside there, I'm getting attention. Hardly did they know. I'm the best thing that has ever happened to this family. La vanya la they can't decide while I'm not ready. They must come first. But we get my opinion. Hali zulu luteng haba no buluka fela. Hey, traditional things baganda ba dira ba chesa mi di kubo mi mi sunya na haba na ba marahan na ki fitha. Chanze kito teo sale kasi ase prai tike growth. Once you don't know who you are, you will become ordinary to everybody. Every family, God has placed one person who's unique, who's supposed to deliver that family. And that person is the most rejected one in that family. Verse number four. Suddenly, the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, come out, you three, to the tent of meeting. And the three of them came out. You know, Hore? Yeah. Verse number five. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud, and he stood at the tent door and called Aaron and Miriam. Then they came forward. There are three of them in the tent, but God calls these two. By really, they undermine Moses. They shouldn't have spoken to Moses that way. Fine. Verse number six. And he said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to that prophet in a vision and speak to him in a dream. Meaning what God is saying, he's trying to bring a prophet and Moses in the same picture. When I speak to prophets on earth, I speak to them through dreams or visions or anything. I don't speak to them face to face. I speak to them indirectly. They get the message through me. Now, verse number seven. But it's not so with my servant Moses. This one, he is entrusted and faithful in all my house or in all my dealings. Verse number eight. With him, I speak mouth to mouth, face to face, directly. Clearly and not in dark speeches or parables. And he beholds the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my seven Moses? What God is saying Moses is a type of God with a small g. He's not a type of God with a capital G. Or the form of God. So whenever you speak to this guy, you must know that you speak to God, but not God Almighty, God with a small g. That's why when Moses died, we never found his body. He just went to the mountain and disappeared. You know why? I totally believe the reason why God hid the body of Moses is because he knew or after Moses died, the Israelites are going to take his body and idolize his body and make that body their own God. So that's why he hid the body of Moses because they were going to make an idol through Moses. Len nas neke ishwa, len kisa mabitle yi. Ha le tlo ira le bitla ka mo hare ha kereke mphe re tlo ya hang. Le mbie mo altareng le tlo khuwa mo pelaka. You don't do that. I'm not God. I'm not God. Don't ever worship me. That's all about to battle bo khuwa mo pelaka. I ntswa ri pila. I'm not God. You understand what I'm trying to say? I'm not God. Do not make me an idol in your life. Verse number 9. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and the Lord departed from them. Verse number 10. And when the cloud departed from over the tent, behold, Miriam was leprous, as white as a snow. And Aaron looked at Miriam, and behold, Miriam was leprous. Verse number 11. And Aaron said to Moses, Oh my Lord, oh, you know, Peter Lord, you forgot, you told me, Mudimu Havlele through my mouth alone. He can speak through anyone. Now that God has punished one of you, now you start calling me my Lord. I plead with you, lay not sin upon us, which we have done foolishly and in which we have sinned. The problem again, they became familiar to somebody who's not supposed to be familiar 
in your life. So be careful of the spirit of familiarity. Let's take another example, Mark chapter 5. Now, I'm just laying down the foundation. Mark chapter number 5. It's a familiar scripture that we know about the woman with an issue of blood. Mark chapter number 5, we are reading from verse number 25. Mark chapter 5, reading from verse number 25. Mark chapter number 5, I'm reading from verse number 25. Verse number 25, it says, And there was a woman who had a flow of blood for how many years? For 12 years. 12 years, this woman been sick. The scholars, Barry, she had problem here, menstruation. Nessa stopi, yaha it was just running, nessa once in a month. So you can imagine how many canali divisa. I can go to visa central language. Sanitary towels. Go to Niger. I shall depend on Rudile. Sanitary towels that she's, this woman bought just to make sure or happy and embarrassed in the community. And according to Lefetika's law, a woman who was going through the periods was not to, supposed to appear in public after seven days of Italian periods. It must go through cleansing. So over Tataba High, it doesn't stop. It flows all the time. Verse number 26. She had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians. She spent all that she had. Instead of getting better, she grew worse. That's why the doctor, Pila Pila, they don't heal you. They just put a veil on that sickness. But that sickness needs Jesus to uproot it out of your, your body. So this woman, instead of getting better, she got worse. Verse number seven, 27. Then she heard, she has never seen Jesus. She heard the reports concerning Jesus. She came up behind Jesus in the crowd and touched his garment. Somebody who was a testifier about touching the garment. You tested, she, she heard the report and she came behind Jesus without Jesus being aware and she touched the garments. Why? Because verse 28, she kept saying, she didn't say it once. After God revealed what Jesus could do, this woman started confessing, if only I'm able to touch the garment of Jesus, I shall be restored to health. It was a confession yeah, every day and Jesus, fortunately the opportunity came for him to pass by the house of this woman. She was not going to the house of this woman. She was passing by the street and then this woman went out and touch the garment of Jesus. Verse 29, and immediately, immediately, instantly, at that moment, when he touched the garments of Jesus, the flow of blood was dried up. Where? From the source. The medicine that they gave me, they don't go to the source. They just cover so that the pain can go away. Matter every sickness, every poverty, everything that has kept in your life has got its source. So that means when you deal with it, deal it at the level of the source, not at the surface. And suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed of her distressing ailment. Verse 30, and Jesus recognizing in himself that the power Proceeding from him had gone forth. He turned around immediately in the crowd and said, What? Who touched me? Who touched me? Listen to what the disciple says, verse 31. And the disciple kept saying to Jesus, Man, you see the crowd pressing hard around you, touching you from all sides, and still you have the audacity to ask us, Who touched me? I want you to see this two scenario. One confessed, if I touch the garment of Jesus, I'll be whole. Now Jesus is moving. Everybody's touching him. Mara, they remain the same. Mara, this one, he touched Jesus and he got healed. You get me? The crowd in Etwara Jesuka, familiarity. No wonder why they never got healed. Everybody is touching Jesus. Mara, they remain the same. Mara, this woman hardly had to touch her because it's familiar to him. Get touch your expectation. Or it's impossible to come in contact with Jesus and still remain the same. Something has got to give way. 
So that's why she came. Got the mentality of expectation. Mara, the disciples and everybody, they touched him. There was no expectation. That's why they remained the same. Mara, what? Just with an expectation, he got healed. And he tells me something. Or it's possible for all of you, for me to preach to you for five years. Hallelujah. Somebody from Cape Town attended the service. And hear me preaching one sermon. And they receive their deliverance immediately. What is the difference between that person and you? Familiarity. Familiarity. No wonder why you like it. Can't take a little thing. That is not the solution. Because if I give you 1,000 rand this month, next month there's no guarantee that you won't come back. Mara, we want to get root. Yaur, why am I short every month? Nagi dealer lay the sauce, agi dealer lay the fruits of that challenge that you are facing. So it's possible for you guys to come here and listen to me for five years and still remain the same. And somebody comes from nowhere, just one sermon. I mean, I remember Peter, Jesus, if it's you, allow me, command me to come to you walking on the water. Jesus preached one word, come, and Peter walked on the water based on one word. How many sermons are you going to give? Until you get out of the boat and walk on the water. It's possible for you to remain the same like this for the next five years. As long as I'm still familiar to you. It's not about me, but I'm trying to show you. I'm not here by mistake. Or I left a salary of more than 35,000 rand. Today I should be earning more 70. Today I should be owning 70,000 rand. There was no bank that could reject me. Next thing. Any car I wanted, I could get it at that time. Okay, you see, I'm at the fish, I'm at the cocoa, and then I go to my. Verse number 32. Still, Jesus kept looking around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, knowing what had been done for her, though alarmed and frightened and trembling, he came down and fell before Jesus and told Jesus, the whole, you can imagine the testimony. I go over and I go testimony every hour, because people can testify. So I want to wonder if fellas say you see the testimony, fellas, kaga rera. Just tell us what the Lord has done for you. So I lega tapelori hi, because we destroy the devil by the blood of Jesus and by the testimony of our mouth. And Jesus said to her, daughter, your 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 faith. It didn't just heal you, restored you back to health. Go in peace and continually be healed and freed from this disease. Put a comma there. Jump to the next chapter, Mark chapter number 6. Mark chapter number 6. Daughter, your faith has restored you back to health. Mark chapter number 6, we are reading from verse number 1. Mark chapter number 6, we are reading from verse number 1. Amen. Now, the Bible says Jesus went away from there and came to his own country, hometown of Nazareth. And his disciples, they did what? They followed him. Back home. He's not in a foreign land. He's at home. Verse number two. Something interesting here. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many were listening to him, and they were utterly astonished, saying, where did this man acquire all this knowledge? Skalevala, hometown. And, and a hometown, Nazareth was a small town just like Tabazimbi. Now let me tell you the secret of a small town. The secret of a small town is that everybody knows about everybody. Oh, I regularly repeat that. The secret of a small town, everybody knows about Everybody. There's nobody that I don't know in a small town. But all the time, you know, we know each other. I don't know if we stay to go, go maspala, go maspala, but all the time, maspala, easy. There is another Birman. It's in Biriaviala, neighbor, Africans. There is another Birman, neighbors. That's why it's in the Alfaya. Laramuvela is Koro, we are talking the same language. Everybody knows 
everybody ne re go haebo sna letswai mama na khonong koma ka ka teaspoon go khopela letswai ko next door ha le bo wa ke 1 kg ya serbos just like that because we were one big family we knew each other le jesus o wetse hai in a small town ba mo tloletse wa rera now they are they are surprised or this boy he grew right in front of our eyes where he he acquired all this knowledge what is the wisdom given to him what mighty works and exhibition of power are wrought by his hand verse number 3 u tlo re ba re is this not ngwana wa mogotlana go letse mo pelareng this is the carpenter he is the son of mary the brother of james and joseph judas and Simon and are not the sister the siblings living amongst us look in verse 2 they saw the miracles they saw the wisdom they saw the revelation knowledge at jesus arerang kayon comma familiarity took over they can see this guy can do extraordinary work mara because he grew in front of us we know his brothers and sisters we know the mother we know the father he was a carpenter This boy just like his father but bring a familiarity into the picture that now it's hard to accept anything from somebody that you are familiar to look at the results after they became familiar with him they took offense at him and they were hurt and they caused to stumble and and fall verse number 4 but Jesus said to them a prophet is not without honor except in his own country amongst his relatives amongst his household you understand what he's saying what jesus is saying here gore a prophet wherever he goes is always anointed anointing does not move from him he's always anointed but the problem gore when a prophet acts in to his hometown the people in his hometown when they look at him they become familiar to him now they fail to tap into the anointing of the prophet that doesn't mean or the prophet is not anointed the prophet always is anointed but the people who are familiar to the prophet they cannot tap into the anointing of the prophet so when he says a prophet is not without honor except when he gets to his hometown his relatives his brothers and sisters they don't see what other people are doing and let me tell you If I never went away for 25 years, do you think I'll be standing here preaching and you listening to me? Never. Ke be le itse re ke ile bana ba kae ko ntle. Ke jo tsela ba kae. Ne ke no ko thakala thunya. Se ka u ka monna ntsa rena tsa mahla ba ta ke tsubile le ba kae mara tso mo yo. Eh le rena re di re fitile mo tsone. And if I preach while you know my history, it's not easy for you. to listen to me yes hanka wella morao go ba thwane ke phela le bona for 25 years they can hear me because why they become familiar to me but lo na ga i went away it's easier for you to receive what i'm preaching to you mara wait if i stayed with you i would never have been here and you listening to me like this verse number 5 and jesus was not able to do even one work of power there except that He laid his hands on the few sick people who were having headaches. O monala molala hai o botlhoko just minor he cured minor diseases. He didn't do extra ordinary thing in that place. Verse number 6 and Jesus marveled because of what their unbelief. What is unbelief? Unbelief is when you believe something that God did not say in his word. As long as it's not in here that's what we call unbelief. And he went about among surrounding villages and continued teaching now look look at this look at this in chapter 5 here is a woman with an issue of blood for 12 years watla o tswara jesu wa fola from sickness that has been on her for 12 years ne let's read again now in mark chapter 6 he couldn't heal anybody but he only healed the few people in his hometown because why they were familiar to him and why they were familiar to him they saw Jesus as a carpenter and according to my analogy a carpenter only fix your kitchen unit and your closet at home there's no carpenter who performs miracle how you see me it determines what kind of breakthrough you will get in me if you see me as a uh, mohotlani junior 
you'll get the junior blessings. You, you left me to live under his shadow for a long time. And guess what? As long as you want a junior, then you'll never get the bigger blessing. You'll get the junior blessing. How you see me, it depends on what kind of breakthrough you are going to get in me. They saw a carpenter, and a carpenter cannot perform extraordinary works. That's why Jesus never performed any extraordinary miracle in that city. Then he left it just like it was. Because why? They were familiar to him. Open with me Second Chronicles chapter number 20. I'll be finished right now so that we can get into the real issues. Second Chronicles chapter number 20. We are reading from verse number 1. Second Chronicles chapter number 20. We are reading from verse number 1. Thank you Lord that you are here now in our midst in Jesus name. Second Chronicles chapter number 20. We are reading from verse number 1. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse number 1. Hare Krila Ring Ameni. Are we there? Ne? All right. After this, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Meonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Remember, when you see the Ites, they represent fear. Amalekites, Ammonites, Jebusites, Moabites, Meonites, they represent Fear. Now, in this instant, three nations, they formed a coalition to come and fight the nation of Judah under the leadership of King Jehoshaphat. It's three against one. So that means for Judah to win, it's an impossible task before them. Three nations have formed a coalition to come and fight against Judah under the leadership of King Jehoshaphat. Verse number two. It was told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude of an army has come against you from beyond the Dead Sea, from Edom, and behold, they are in Hazas and Tamar, which is in Gedi. Verse number three. Then Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord, and he did what? He proclaimed a fast in all the nation of Judah. By the way, Fasting does not move the hand of God. What fasting does, it loosens the strongholds of the devil. Remember, God has already blessed you with everything that you might need. I mean, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. The grace of our Lord Jesus that he blessed us with all spiritual blessing where in the heaven you are already blessed. Mara, some of your blessings, the devil has held them. When you are not aware of it, they are dead. Now, when you fast, it's when you lose in the strongholds of the devil over any breakthrough. Now, Joseph had declared a fast around the whole of Judah. It doesn't mean God has not given them the victory. The victory is there. Marafia has made them the victory right in front of them. That's why he declared the whole nation, let us go through first. You remember the incident there, Esther, uh, the Jews are about to be killed. Esther is the queen. Mordecai Marare Esther. Go and speak to the king and tell him whatever the law is doing is an illegal law. Then Esther said, no, 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 I fear. I can't go to the king when the king has not called me. Then Mordecai said something really important. Are, who, who knows who you were brought to the kingdom for such a time as this one? So that in no another Messiah for the Jewish people who are about to die. Then Esther declared a three days fasting. After three days, you were not supposed to go to King Ahasuerus if he has never called for you. Mara Esther went to the chamber. When he arrived, King Ahasuerus stretched the, 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 you are not supposed to come to the chamber if the king has not called you. But Esther fasted for three days. All the strongholds have been loosened. So that's why he declared a fasting. Verse number four. And Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Could you understand something? Mudimus has provided any solution for any problem 
that you go through. Mara botata baruna, ke hore re phela in the era ya instant. Instant ke re lore le le jungle oats. We don't cook it for 20 minutes anymore. You put it in a microwave within 2 minutes you can eat jungle oats. Those who eat pap, you can even put pap in a microwave within 2 minutes. Go re re phela mo the world ya instant. We are not willing to go through the process where we can get our breakthrough. Everything you need, God has already prepared but you can't jump the principle of the kingdom of God verse number five and Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and he said in verse six O Lord God of our fathers are you not God in heaven and do you not rule over the kingdoms of the nation in your hand are power and might so that no one is able to withstand you. Did not you, O oh our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and you gave us forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They dwelt in it and have built you a sanctuary in this land for your name, saying, if evil comes upon us, the sword of judgment or pestilence or famine, we will stand before this house and before you. For your name is in the house and cry to you in our affliction and you will hear and save us. And now behold, the men of Ammon, the men of Moab, the men of Mount Sire, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came from the land of Egypt, and whom they turned from and did not destroy. Behold, they reward us by coming to drive us out of your possession which you have given us to inherit. Oh, our God, will you not exercise judgment upon them? For we have no might to stand against this great company that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes look up to you, Lord, for your salvation. What is Joseph doing? He's praying what I call a prayer of petition. A prayer of petition, it remind, not that God forgets, it reminds God of the victories and the promises that he gave us in his way. That's why 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, it, this is the confidence we have. For when we come into his presence and we pray according to his will, we pray a prayer, a prayer of petition. Guess what? The Lord hears our prayer. And verse 15, we already received any kind of answer that we presented in that petition before him. So what Joseph is doing here, he's praying a prayer of petition unto the Lord. And a prayer of petition, it invokes God to act upon his way. That's why every Sunday when I give you a confession, it's a prayer of petition. That confession has been derived from the word of God. You read God, his word, about what he promised you in his word. And you've got a guarantee, your answer. He didn't complain. He reads the petition prayer unto God. Verse number 13. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their children and their house. Their wives, sorry. Verse 14. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jahaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Baniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asab in the midst of the assembly. All right, let me ask you a question. Who prayed the prayer of petition? Or Levites? In that prayer of petition. Who prayed a prayer of petition? Who prayed a prayer of petition? Eh, come out of business that prayer and give Joseph had. Joseph had prayed a prayer of petition. But what surprises me, God, He doesn't answer through King Joseph. He chooses one of the Levites by the name of Jahaziel, and God spoke to him. So common sense tells me when God is supposed to answer, He must answer through the person who prayed 
the prayer. But God didn't do that. He decided to use a stranger, Jahaziel, who's a Levite, who's not even a Jew, to answer Karabo so that they can get victory in the battle. Why am I asking this question? Source that you never expected. That's why I'm asking you this question. Your answer will never come the way we expect it. That source that God uses to answer you, that person is not acceptable to you. All of you, you expect, I'm going to get healed. Only if I know that I'm going to get healed. I'm going to get two months. Are you going to believe it? I'm going to get Never, you won't believe it. Because of it, respect the Lord, any solution, it's not like a moi. Can't know. God doesn't work by common sense. So whenever you expect an answer, stop being familiar. You must understand something. A woman with an issue of blood, she got healed by touching the garment. That doesn't mean anybody who touches the garment will get healed. God doesn't work by familiar ways. He can use anything, anywhere. Anything. So common sense tells me an answer must come through Jehoshaphat, but God chose Jehaziel to bring an answer that will bring an outcome of the battle. Verse number 15. Then Jehaziel said, Hear can all Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem, you King Jehoshaphat, the Lord say this to you, be not afraid or dismayed at this great army that is coming against you, for this battle does not belong to you, but it belongs to the Lord. My God. Verse number 16. Tomorrow, go down to, head to them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of Zeus, and you will find them at the end of the raven before the wilderness of Jeriel. Verse 17. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Take up your position. Stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord who is with you. Oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out to them, for the Lord is with you. Amen. 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 The response ya King Jehoshaphat. Verse 18. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants by imitated the king. They bowed down before the Lord, worshiping him. No jealousy. No jealousy. Why would Masa we through my mouth? I choose this guy. Because Jehoshaphat knows or in the kingdom is a team effort. It's not a one-man show. So it doesn't mean break through it like a a one fella. He last now somebody must have let him throw Jahaziel. No jealousy. That man he bowed down and he worshiped the Lord for the answer. A and I rapilating on behalf of the nation of Israel. It's got nothing to do with competition. It's all about teamwork. So Lord, and I don't expect the answer to come one way. God can use anyone, anywhere, anytime. Verse number 19. And some Levites of the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a loud voice. Verse 20, and they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. As they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. You shall be established. Believe and remain steadfast to the prophets of God and you shall do what you shall prosper. Look, listen, listen to what he's saying. There's no mention of believing the king. There's no mention of believing the king. He says, believe in the God of heaven. You shall be established. Believe in the prophets. You shall, because he understands that this is a team work. It doesn't mean I'm out of line. He can use anything Anywhere he wants to use in your life in Jesus' name. Marbal in Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 17. Just to cut the long story short, Mudimu Burite, Jehoshaphat, a worship team, they went to Deva, the musical instruments, they played. Hans Badala, those guys, they started fighting against themselves. The three nations, 
the Ammonites, the Moanites, and the Moabites, they fought against themselves. They defeated themselves. When Judah came into the scene, they only found dead corpses. And guess what? The Bible says it took them three days to gather the spoils, take them home. The spoils again, whatever is left, the diamond, the gold, did each other, they, they gathered them and went back home. They never even fought in this battle. You know why? Because they were not familiar to how God speaks concerning their lives. Hebrews 13, verse number 17. Hebrews chapter number 13. Verse number 17. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, obey. Because this one is very important before those all. Obey your spiritual leaders and do what? Submit to them. Who's your spiritual leader? Or a katagat a little atelier. And I'll soon monica macho Jesu. Like most of you, you see Jesus through me. And when the Bible says submit to them, ere recognize their authority on you. Authority doesn't mean when I say jump, you must ask how high. Authority, I've got, I've, I've got, God is using my mouth to speak to you. It's not about me, it's about God. That's why John 14, Jesus says, it's not me who's doing the work. The Father in me is the one who's doing the work. Jesus in me is the one who's doing the work. So obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them. Be under their authority. Emonate, Hadilori Zamaya, Shab Shab. Wait until go home, Manya Marabatu. Wait until go home, more about to go in your fat to go be a mola. And Jiki is intentionally to test the spirit that is in you. Once you retaliate with anger, I can see that person is not ready. Let me leave them. Marbaba, Muruti Guru Litiam is Guru Muruti Isiam. That's why Hosi Dafita Kore level Muri Marbele Monica level a kinship. Dafita na Kono Tela Muno Mosadi. Munola will never retaliate. There are hungry Lemona when you are Bible. Give a little Java side and you will never retaliate. Marmurimun to Sagra de Basadicia. Say it at the Nazar Vallega Zaga fell on a rat and say, Oh, just like that. Out to the Chella, the Chella will never come to you. Just like that. Ne? Obey your spiritual leaders, submit to them. Why? They are constantly keeping watch over your soul and they are guarding your spiritual welfare. As men, who will have to render an account? Higher spiritual welfare, the richness that God has taught you in the heavenly realms. How rich are you in the spirit? And Sunday I come and stand here and tell you how rich you are. It's up to you to believe that. That's what the Bible says. Faith comes by hearing, but hearing what? The word of God. How will you believe if there's nobody preaching to you? How will they preach to you if God did not send them? So faith is he generated the spirit of faith on the inside of you. So that's my duty to guard your spiritual welfare. Zakaya, I want to something. I, I use you. Now, please, please, please. I got shy. I get a reverse because it's a child. No, it will matter. Do your part to let them do this with gladness, not with saying. Saying it means mourning. Now, now, if they report with mourning and groaning, for that would not be profitable to you either. How could you say that? Go report a good to level to go the boss upstairs. And I guess what answer I think it will reflect uh, towards you. And I say, Carabo, eh, that means how you go pillar pillar, Mumu, Tavisa, your spiritual leader. What have you said, Pilar Tavil?
Do you know that it's easy to bless somebody who respects and honors you than to bless somebody who undermines you? Anybody who looks down on me, it becomes hard for me to pray for them. Yes, the Bible requires me to pray for you. I 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 pray for I pray for I will come and talk. I said the statement the last time. I know what I have to say. But I have to say the way. So I said, 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 I some of you, your marriage is still standing today because you are under the roof. You're under the roof. You're not out. When I take a chance and go outside, you'll see, I'm not, I'm not condemning you. I'm not threatening you. I'm showing you the importance, the other anointing that is on me. Don't forget that one. It's impossible to bless somebody who doesn't respect or honor you. Let me close by this. Okay, it's a question. Uh, who... You remember Mark chapter 5, we spoke about the woman with an issue of blood. Who, who healed this woman? Think, think, before Karaba, Nahana, Nahana. Who healed this woman with an issue of blood? Yeah? Who healed him? Remember, remember he said in verse number 13, eh? let me show you something. Verse number 13, the Bible says, and Jesus, as this woman, the garment they high. And Jesus recognized in himself, that power proceeded from him had gone forth in brackets without his permission. Because if it was the permission of Jesus, gave us not surprised. So this woman tapped into the favor and the anointing of healing that is inside of Jesus. And Jesus turned around immediately in the crowd and said, who touched me? Now, verse 34. How does Allah or and Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith, not me, has restored you to health. Go in peace and be continually healed and fraught. be freed from this disease. So that means, to me, Lord, said you, he Lord, a tap into the healing anointing inside of Christ and God healed. Now, I'm your pastor. There's a certain level of anointing and favor that God has placed on the inside of me. But as long as you are still familiar to me, it will be impossible for you to tap into that anointing. I don't just come to your house and place my feet and things remain the same. Little never been pregnant. I know culturally, they told you, after a baby is born, the baby must be inside the house and nobody willing a stranger who must enter the house. That's why they that thing yellow mumunyako, Kalibizangaswan. So, so, that thing or Now I'm a man of God. It's only the witches who will do that. But what you do, you honor first the traditional ways. Then ask them one hour, let you let it tell you. Go to the Father. Mara, you never allowed me to be the first one to come and anoint that baby. Familiarity, it breeds contempt. You'll see me getting worthless in your life. But God doesn't make mistakes. He knew that he placed me in your life in order to take you out of that poverty. Let me decree and declare. None of you, by the end of 2023, you'll be staying here unemployed. Amen. Not when I'm still alive. The year 2020, all of us, we must have a source, and I get a source of income. I give you the money, Rabbi. I don't want to grant the government. Hey, hey, you grant it, you can't pull a fail. You can't tell that to a local demon. Every few ang, you must do not in my presence, unless you still see me, get familiar. Then these things will never come into your life. We're gonna confess favor that is in me. I'm gonna release it upon you today, in Jesus' name. If you can stand. Let's turn on our feet and make this confession of favor upon your life.
in the name of Jesus. It's easy to tap into my anointing. Mm. And are you aware of it? Lens have I am. Kemang, kemang, ring with some puzzle as well. Kemang, what's on Kohaga, but sign and have it. Eh? I love one of one dressing blind of a shop. Bob and Jillian and have it. You think twice. Think twice. And once you're familiar, it's easy. 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 Say, I'm a righteousness of God. In Jesus' name. Let's speak it like we mean it. Therefore, I'm entitled to covenant favor. The favor of God is among the righteous. The favor of God surrounds the righteous. Therefore, the favor of God surrounds me. Everywhere I, go, Everywhere I go, in everything I do, everything. I, expect I expect the favor of God, favor of God to be in full manifestation, in, full manifestation. In, my life, in my life, right now, right. in Jesus' name. Jesus. Never, 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 never again, again will I be without the favor of God. The favor of God. Rest richly upon me. The favor of God profusely abounds on me. I'm a part of the generation that is experiencing the favor of God immeasurably, limitlessly, and exceedingly. Therefore, the favor of God produces in me Supernatural increase, promotion, restoration, honor, increased assets, greater victories, recognition, prominence, preferential treatment, petitions granted, policies and rules change, and battles won in which I do not have to fight. The favor of God is on me right now. The favor of God goes before me. Therefore, my life will never, never be the same again. This is the time of God's favor in my life. That is the favor of God. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your favor that is upon everybody who's under the authority of my voice right now. I decree and declare that status is changing in their lives. I decree and declare that doors that have been closed are being opened right now. I decree and declare that Father, you are leading them to every victory that you have already set aside for them. Their lives shall never, ever be the same again. You watch over your way to perform it. Perform your way upon their lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. And somebody say, Amen. Amen.